I'm going to instruct your soul to take you back to a lifetime that you had. Three, two, one. Tell me what you see. I have a, a, a leprechaun costume and... Huh? What's up? Let's be real. Hypnotherapy is not the first option for anything. Whenever we think about, hey, am I gonna find the criminal who took my wife's handbag? Ah! You don't resort to a hypnotherapist first. That is clearly the last resort. That is why it is so funny that Big Ed is now resorting to hypnotherapy at his resort to try and get his relationship sorted. Because that is the Hail Mary of life. Whenever you're using a hypnotherapist to solve your problems, <coughs> that's like using cocaine to give you energy. It could work, but the ramifications of dire. That is what's happening today on 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort. I haven't watched this footage. I just got a cut up. I'm going to react to it live. And on that note, I just want to say two things. One, London is cool. If anybody is from London, shout out. I was really happy meeting everyone uh, so far. And if you want to see me, then, you know, pop by my Instagram, send me a message. Don't have too much time left here, but it would be fun. Uh, secondly, as I was saying, I react to things live and I don't usually write anything I say. It's all off the top of my head. So would you guys like to make maybe see a live stream or two on YouTube? If so, please leave it in the comments. I just want to get a gauge. I did ask on the community tab, so let me know there if you'd like to. Might be cool. Anyway, my relationship is falling apart. My girlfriend, who's 30 years younger than me, always is crying or horny. Those are the two modes she had. And now I can't actually express my feelings, so I'm gonna get someone to hypnotherapize me into doing so. It seems like a convoluted way of doing things. Let's listen to this amazing footage. I never get tired of seeing this man float on the pool like it's the aftermath of what you left called a floater in the toilet. And I know you know what that is. That's when you do a poo poo and it rises to the top. That is what Big Ed looks like. I need my coffee. So the episode starts off with my favorite person, Dr. Jason Pendergrasshole. <laughs> By the end of the series, he's gonna be my arch nemesis because I am convinced this man is nothing more than a person who wears suits from time to time and says words. He has a PhD apparently. He got seven years worth of work. He's at the top of his field and he says things like this. Let's, let's, let's work towards getting to a better place. I can't be with a person that don't love me back and treats me like this. So in the last episode, there are a lot of things that go on. And even though the series is more focused on Big Ed, especially what I'm covering, there are people who intersect with Big Ed's lives. For one, Kelly is also having his own problems with Molly. Molly is not the drug, it's just the person he's addicted to. So she's like his drug, but both of them annoy me. I think Kelly and Molly both are holding on to things that they need to release. Uh, this is like someone smoking, getting lung cancer, and then him coming in with a doctor's clip and being like, you probably shouldn't do that. We're gonna see if they put in the work. Oh, and that's how that ends. We're gonna see. I've never seen someone less equipped to handle this relationship situation and that guy. I feel like he took this job just so that he could go on holiday and subpoena coladas. And every time people talk, he's like, oh, really? How do you feel about that? Mmm, mole. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, I guess this is Big Ed and Liz, and he's wearing different color Crocs because I watched the last episode and he had green Crocs. And I will say to you, if you have two pairs of Crocs, I will divorce you if I'm married to you. And if you have more than two pairs of Crocs, I might never talk to you again. The only Crocs that are acceptable are the new Shrek Crocs that are coming out. They look kind of cool. RIP to the dude who sang that Shrek song. Can you swim? A little bit. We've never been in the ocean together. It would turn into a water hole. I can swim like four feet. Mm -hmm. And then I sink. There you go. I am a scaredy cat of the water. So whenever I go into the ocean, I always bring my, my floaties. Very patriotic, I guess, that he's wearing American floaties. I didn't think you could be this obnoxiously American, but turns out you can. I've never had to blow up my partner's floaties before. If anything, by the way, he should have blown up your floaties since he's like literally double your age. But back in his day, they didn't have floaties. He watched the Titanic sink in real time because he was about 30 then, so. 
god, you're so embarrassing. I don't even understand their relationship at this point. Not an episode ago, were these two crying and fighting, he was eating a sandwich as she was calling her mother, exclaiming that he is just the worst, and her mother said, you should leave him, and now, not that long later, they're wearing these matching shorts slash bathing suit combo, she's putting the floaties on, saying, you're embarrassing, stop, and they're like homies again. It's really good that they have this part, and it means that the good stuff is good, and clearly I can see the chemistry, I can see them getting along, but at the other juncture of it, it's like, why will you guys refuse to communicate during these fights? What is it that makes it so hard for these two people to have an open conversation and see, say, I see where you're coming from, I don't feel like this, I do feel like this, I'm glad that we talked about it, I really love and respect you enough to want to have this, because I don't want to fight with you. Because the good stuff's good, so why are you letting the bad stuff get in the way? That's all I'm worried about. But I don't get their relationship because it makes it really hard to care for either one of them when they feel sad when the next day they're just like aces. Don't let me float away to Cuba. Look at, look at that neck and shit, I'm sorry. God damn it, you know what? They should stop playing Ocean Man every time this man goes into the water. He looks like the thing from the music video. Ocean Man, won't you take me by the hand? So babe, do I bring up to the sex therapist when I did that, that sucking thing? You were moaning and laughing, I couldn't concentrate. Last night, Ed and I, we had a good talk and then uh, we failed our homework assignment. Oh, uh, you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Big Ed and Liz, they have these big fights and when they come back, they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Actually, this is a better representation. Oh, oh, like kind of like that. Basically, I think that's how they make up. And while that's, you know, really fun in college and high school, and that's not a substitute for communication. Like, makeup sex is makeup communication in the long run because it'll solve a lot of issues. So while the other one is fun, the other one's more mature. The assignment was to explore arousal without penetration. We would have got A for effort, F for a grade. This is a happy F minus. The fact that I had to sit through one of the biggest fights in the series because Ed wasn't trying and then now Liz is like, ah, it is what it is, me. I thought you were supposed to be really trying. I thought Ed was supposed to be trying. Now it's all like fun and games. You kind of being hypocritical, going against your own word now. When it's fun, it's okay, but if Big Ed did that and you didn't like it, it would have been like, Oh, Ed, you fat, you bad in bed, you ain't shit. I should have left you for a taller man. I can already see little differences in a couple days, but... Um, no you can't. <laughs> Excuse me, I call bullshit. I've been following you guys like BBC Documentary Channel. You guys are the exact same. You have a lot of fun, then you fight, and you fight really hard. You never want to see each other again. You say some shit you don't mean. Make up sex. The cycle repeats every, every time. I don't think that's good. Whenever you have cyclic patterns that you can't break, that's not a good sign of a relationship. Healthy relationships are bold. It's like a staircase, you keep moving up. Cyclic pattern relationships where you get stuck and you can't get out the loop, that's not good. But I think we're in the right place. Nope. Ed and I are back in a good place right now, but this is our pattern. I need to see permanent changes, not temporary changes. How about you also change as well? It takes two people to change. She recognized that there's a pattern. Now you gotta do something about it because it's not always up to him. So the next day, presumably, this is where they, uh, they get hypnotized. I don't really know what happens from here, but I have seen the trailer. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you look so... Tropical. He sits like a fucking frog, man. I've never seen someone sit like a Buddha. Someone should rub your tummy for luck. One of the tools that I use with clients is past life regression. I go back to the past life and create healing for people by healing their past life trauma with hypnosis. She's effectively going back to the past to try and undo a lot of the knots and then they'll be fine. How do you study for that exactly? You probably don't know this, but I channel from spirit. You probably didn't know this about me as if people constantly are like, you look like a bitch that channels from spirit. PT, it's, she just looks like someone who would hold a clock in front of your face and swing it. I think she looks like 
Who? Jenny. 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 Yeah. And Sumit. Yeah. She does. Oh my god. Maybe she was Jenny in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I'm not gonna lie. That was, that was a good one. So Liz, this is the place where you get to depart and have God. So Liz, this is the place where you depart. You know, that's how she probably kicks people out. They're like in a trance, hypnotized, and she's like. Oh my god, it's been an hour. And they're like, oh shit, I'll pay you for two hours if you shut the fuck up. I'm excited. Because she will often tell me, oh, you had to be a king in my past life. And I, I tell her she was like like Cleopatra, like ruling people. And What did you smoke before this? So I'm going to hypnotize you. God, I get scared every time he lays back. I'm like, ooh, that neck passage either is opening up or closing up. I don't know what's going on there. Three, two, one. You're now in a deeply relaxed state. This is hypnotherapy these days? It's that lazy? Three, two, one, you're hypnotized, get out. That'll be 500 bucks. Tell me what you see. <laughs> That's what he was in a past life? A swine? What? And that ends like that scene. There's one more later on, but like in this scene, the rest of the boys are going out for a drinks night out because they need to get away from everything. I think everyone deserves a break from therapy. It has been hot and heated. I don't know anything about this guy Jovi other than apparently he really likes strip clubs. You know, a lot of strip clubs here. This is the place you come to party. I'm kind of glad that Ed's not here. I need a break from him. I need a break from Yara. I need my space. <laughs> This is why I kept this in. This dude said <laughs> he put Big Ed before his wife in this. He was like, I need a break from Big Ed. My wife, I also need, yeah, we're, we're going through some issues. That one's also bad. But Big Ed, oh my God. The first thing on his mind is Big Ed, my wife, strip club. Cheers. Cheers. Manuia. The guy, Azuelo. For any of you who don't know, I haven't been watching the series. This man basically proceeded to cheat on his partner. He got an uh, infection. And then he said, let me give you a whole pass to kiss a guy. And then she ended up doing everything. She did the whole 10 yards with the guy and then developed feelings for him. So did he f you? Wow. I don't know who's worse, him or her, but what I do know is that they're now going to a strip club and that's probably not going to fix it. You've never been to a strip club, right? Yes. No, what do yeah. they have in Samoa? What, what's going on? I'm nothing. So, Samoa, we're not allowed at? I think going to a strip club is essential to learning American culture. Damn, we have so much patriotism in this episode. We have the floaties and then we have strip clubs. And you know what? He's right. Because every time I've seen a Carl's Jr. ad, all I see is women in bikinis holding some sort of weaponry and eating meat. But not like that. And I think for someone like Aswelu, taking him to the strip club could be good. I want to, you know, open his eyes. I don't know if you need to take this man to a strip club. Maybe the place that he's in right now trying to work on his relationship might be it. But Jovi really likes strip clubs. Last time I took Yara to a strip club, I got slapped in the face. Hey, Jovi, I, I'm trying to do both. I'm having fun here. I don't want to leave. You lost your <laughs> Blowing kisses in front of your partner to someone else? Now you now you're doing some real alpha shit right there. My wife isn't really a fan of strip clubs. Unlike many wives who just love it, they wake up and they're like, where do you wanna go, honey? A uh, picnic. Ah, f no, fuck. Let's go to a strip club. I wanna see some titties. We're back to Big Ed being hypnotized. I wanna see what happens here. I've been here before. I have, I have a, a like a elf, like a, um, a leprechaun costume and. All right, TLC, if you want to make up some random bullshit, you should have just employed me. I could write a script. I could put it into chat GBT, say, say some random shit and then read it off. In fact, I'll do that right now. Here, I'm going to type it in random. That's it. Did you know that honey never spoils? 
Archaeologists have found pots of honey in ancient tombs that are over 3,000 years old and still perfectly edible. Honey's natural composition with lower water content and high install acidity honey. It's free and only takes two clicks to install. There is no reason not to go to joinhoney.com right now on every computer in your Under home. the right conditions. In that case, I would like to be a bee. In my past life, I was a bee. Zzz. Oh my god, he said a leprechaun costume. A leprechaun costume. He said a leprechaun co I guess it wouldn't be that hard to do the other stuff about the height. You know, if he just wore green, he'd pretty much already look like a leprechaun. So Just a leprechaun who ate other leprechauns or a leprechaun who ate the pot of gold. Do you know what year it is? 1669. 1669, they had leprechauns? Chat GPT, was leprechauns real? While leprechauns are not real in the sense that they are supernatural beings, they hold a special place in Irish culture and storytelling. Can I ask like a serious question? How is this? How is him busting through that door and saying, Liz, I know I'm a leprechaun. So now we can actually have a great relationship. How does that help? this dude in any sense, shape, or form. All I know now is that he used to be exactly the same, just more green. What was the soul lesson that came through that oh. lifetime on into the cell memories of this lifetime again? That I'm not loved. That's what she, does. she made him say he's a fucking leprechaun in 1669. So that the lesson he could learn was that he doesn't feel as loved as he should be. Bitch, you do not have to go back 500 years for him to have that lesson. I cannot believe this is the thing that I'm watching. You're born worthy of love. Yes. That's it. That was, that was the, there's, there's one more segment. I think I left it towards the end. I want to see what happens, but that's, he got leprechaunized. As if not to make matters worse, there's a scene where the girl and the old one, the grandma, is chasing the youngest one with a dildo. I'm feeling good. I'm not horny today. I'm not horny today. Please stop it. I don't want nothing which been touched uh, Angela's juice touch my body. What kind of juice do you guys like? Is it Angela's pea juice? Is it, is it her poon juice? Is that what it is? It's not prune juice. Even though she's old, it's her poon juice. Angela's poon juice. She's gonna wave it around in your face. Waves it in your face till you take a taste. Ugh. I'm gonna vomit. I swear I would. <laughs> yeah, stop! How was your homework though? Yeah, how was your homework? Um, my homework was to masturbate, so. Oh God, okay. If you haven't watched the series and this is your first time, I know your eyes are probably popping out of your head. I did my homework two times. Who are you thinking of, though? <laughs> I had a couple home videos. Oh, I of, 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 of Suelo? This is the thing I saw in the last episode. She was thinking about someone else. Uh, not, sorry, not just thinking about someone else, watching someone else, watching her old tapes. She was watching her performance, rating it. I feel guilty that I lied to Oswelu about thinking of the other guy while I was doing my homework. When I think about Oswelu in a sexual way, it kind of just makes me sick. Not because it's like terrible or anything, but because I always think about him cheating. If people want me to do a video on them, I will. But from what I can tell from the few times I've seen them, her saying that she's not even able to tell him she's less attracted to him is bad. Secondly, it's because he cheated and she said she can't see him but the same way. Meantime, she did the same thing and developed feelings for someone else. And so on her end, she's being a hypocrite. On his end, he's just going to strip clubs to try and fix the problem. This is like, if you have a leak in your house, you fix it by getting a boat. Fix the fucking issue. And I don't want to make things any worse by telling him the truth. Right, good, because that'll make things better. And that's that scene, but now we return to the, you know, mm. coop the crap, Big Ed. And five. Oh, Jesus. I was awake the whole time, but I was asleep. I sort of kind of started to my pants. I didn't know. I was a performer and my face was like distorted. I had no eyes. And in the end, I was discarded. But look what you chose again for this lifetime. Why would you say that to him? I, I had no eyes. I was like, you know, really strong, really people hate me. Look what you chose now. I have a big neck. I'm really strong. Everybody hate me. What do you mean? You have figured it out. Yeah. 
thanks to getting a partner that yeah. is so supportive. How does this have anything to do with Liz? Oh, there are so many questions going through my head, but uh, seriously, she equated all of that to, look at you, you used to be a leprechaun. Now you can find love. This is the biggest reach I think I've ever seen, man. Past life regression. I mean, it was, it was scary. I was made to feel different and inferior. And now I definitely feel love and, and Liz makes me feel love. Aww. So I guess this is the th theme. This is the lesson. If you ever are having issues with your partner, just remember, 500 years ago, you were a piece of shit, and then you have a newfound respect for your partner. You're like, well, she screams at me, and she hates me, and she's really mean at times, but you know what? I guess this is marginally better. But I know what my next tattoo is. What? A leprechaun from, ninth, from 1669. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we figured out. Big Ed is a leprechaun. That's the title of this video, apparently. Big Ed used to be a leprechaun in his past life. The title is as stupid as the actual content. I cannot wait for this to end. I gotta say, Big Ed, his prime was when he had that long hair and put mayo in it. Thank you, TLC and 90 Day Fiance for another great, great episode. I feel so much better about going into relationships now. You've taught me so much. Anyway, that's the episode. Uh, apparently next time, this is what's gonna happen. What the hell is going on? Oh my God! <laughs> so it seems like the next episode is, uh, is more sex. Now, I don't know just by the way, if TLC understands their audience, we like seeing the drama, not necessarily old and maybe out of shape people doing sex. It's never been a great selling point of the show. I guess I'm covering that next. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I uh, hope you liked it. Tell me if you did below. <laughs> and until the next episode, please don't go back 500 years in time if you don't have to. You won't discover much. Thank you. Take care.